Hi, hello, hey, and welcome to this episode of Rushed Vibes. I am Jessica Rushed Vibes Rushing, accompanied by Mr. David Rushed Vibes Rushing, and we are here to rush the vibe. With our tribe. You can't you can't be switching it Why up. Why can't you say it? Because you're the one who says it. You bring us in and I take us out. It's a partnership, it's what we do. I don't know why I can't just stop it. The rest of the vibe. If you're gonna make changes to how you bring in our show, our show, as the executive producer, I need you to run these as things the by talent, me. As a talent, I can do whatever I want since I am not EP. As a talent, that's how you gain a reputation for people to not want to work with you. You just okay. go off the cuff. <laughs> I'll leave. No, you won't. Because uh, I can't do the podcast by exactly. myself. Anyways, what's up? Not much. It's been a while. You look nice. Thank you. You match the uh, the art behind you and the and the rush vibe sign with your. It's not my gold. Intention. It's, it's gold. It's yellow. Yellow. It's yellow. Feels gold to me. The way it's I'm a looking. Dark yellow. Dark yellow. That would be gold, then, right? No, gold is gold. Mm. This is dark yellow. Rocking your your humming bee shirt. I am in honor of my humming bee herself. Your. Yeah, because you always fighting with her. I'm not. It's, it's a no. it's a playful. It's unhealthy. From her side. From your she side. Be, I just post stuff and she'd be attacking no, me. No, you're 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 like, you probe. No, nah, I'm probe. I mind my own business. Anyway, my humming bee is doing casting some black girl magic spells in Alaska as a black woman. Yes, because she's the first black woman to go to Alaska. No, but in the (laughs) great outdoors, she started in Houston, joined this group of women who were Hold on, don't steal her thunder. I'm not. Okay. I'm just... just, She's supposed to come on I'm proud of her. I'm excited for her. So I wanted to to rep and honor her. So that's what I'm doing. I noticed you... Uh, spamming her her posts as she was making her way to Alaska, talking about, "I'm so proud of you. Have so much fun. Like you're a mom or something." I told her to have too much fun. Too much fun. Yeah, yeah. It's like you're a mom or something. No, I'm her. So, I'm her. Like you standing friend. there, standing there with you. I'm her with friend. I'm supporting her. I'm, her proud, off. I'm proud of her. She's. It's an accomplishment. I mean, it's it's all jokes aside. It's it's a big deal. Yeah. So I just wanna I wanna rep her today. Rep her brand. So if you need any. Marketing, because I don't know. She still uh, do that anymore? Yeah, I'm pretty sure she does. That's no. Graphic design, Alaska is kind of expensive. I don't know I if she, she came out of pocket or not. She might, she might need an extra check. So thought she was pivoting. Anyway, yeah. this is this is for you. Yeah, shout out to my uh, hummingbird. Shout out to to Missy. Missy, Missy, her Missy my Wilson. Yeah. Oh, I'm rocking my. Uh... Nobody asked. <laughs> My uh, no one asked. Razor Ramon shirt. He is not black. Rest in peace to uh, a legend, a WWE legend, Scott Hall, who uh, left this earth a few months ago. Uh, bought the shirts. Then this one actually took a while to come in. It was back ordered uh, because the wrestling wrestling faithful were all uh, showing their appreciation and their respects to Mr. Hall by purchasing. His shirts, his memorabilia, as you might call it. So, the original bad guy, Mr. Razor Ramon. It's also crazy how um, in wrestling they have all these personas, right? Like these characters. <laughs> like Dwayne Johnson was The Rock. Before that, he was Rocky Maivia. Um, and as they as they they rise or in stature, and sometimes their characters change. Um, Scott Hall was a white dude, like six eight white dude. <laughs> they had him playing like uh, his character Razor Ramon was like supposed to be from Cuba. <laughs> so yeah, the accent and everything like you just had to be there. I feel like that so many cultural appropriation. <laughs> and, and I, you don't re- like as a kid because in, in WWE then then WWF's height. I was a kid, so I didn't really understand like a lot of the cultural things that I would understand as now. I just knew it was a cool dude cool cool wrestler with who used to walk around with a toothpick with an accent 
and thought nothing of it. So now, as a 34 year old, so he was brown faced looking, looking. No, he didn't. He didn't tan or anything. He was just like white, but he had an accent, <laughs> he had a Cuban, Cuban accent, which was. I mean, it was kind of believable. But no, nah, Scott Hall though he was, he was a legend. Nobody he has an good. issue with this. I don't know. Well, the, the, <laughs> I don't think. So. I mean, I'm sure somebody did. Um, but Scott Hall was universally loved and appreciated throughout all of his characters or his personas around his wrestling career. So I wanted to he's come dead, in, so I'm gonna leave pay it, homage. I'm gonna leave it alone only because he's dead. Because this is pay homage this to is a, a problem. I mean, tell me we couldn't have found a Latino man to actually I mean, play. They came up with, from what I understand, they came of you when you were coming into the business. They kind of came up with your character for you, and you had to. So you had to they be the character. Just Scott Hall from Appalachia or something. Yeah, I don't know. It ain't that deep though. It is. It's racist. Oh, stop it! Stop it! It's right. It's there's a problem. Stop there are plenty it. of Cubans who needed a job. It's really warm here. You know, I haven't been able to get the air to kick on down here without turning off the air upstairs. Because I'm worried the cameras are going to overheat again. So um, hopefully we'll get longer than than we did last time. Speaking of, you want to talk about where we've been? Because this will be almost two weeks, I guess, since people have heard from us or seen us. Yeah, because you didn't drop our last episode. That's because we had technical difficulties. You could have at least dropped the audio. You didn't even consult with me. This is on the EP. You know, it's so crazy because when it comes to decisions of the podcast, you just tell me to make it. And then when I no, make decisions. I told you to make decisions per, per decorating the per studio. Per your what? Your last email? You say per to me. I'm not I'm not a lackey. I'm not a, I'm not a direct report. I'm your, I'm your executive producer of Rush Vibes. Don't per me. Okay. Are you done? <laughs> I'm done. Yeah, so you didn't even consult with me. It was a very good episode. And you didn't want to put the video out. You could have at least put the audio up on, on Apple. What makes you else. think it was very good? Because we finished it. We finished a lot of episodes. So all the episodes are very good? That one was very good. What about it? The content. And maybe if you put it up, people can judge for themselves. Okay. So what we'll do is uh, we'll leave it to the people. If you all feel like we should release... The audio version of our unreleased episode over the last couple of weeks. Let us know your thoughts. We'll let the people decide. We got like 45 people who are going to respond. <laughs> Just post the audio. I, I don't want to post it because it's, it's incomplete. It's, it's incomplete. Not incomplete. And you know, we've. Uh, the video is incomplete. The audio is not. Well, in the audio, I was referencing the video. That was incomplete. Okay. Well, we converse in such a way that we can, that people will understand what happened. Okay. Put it up. You should have put it up last week. But I didn't. No, you didn't. So you failed the tribe. Anyway. If, if, we, that's, how, if that's how you want to uh, pitch it, then, you know, I, who am I to tell you how to feel about what happened? But part of leadership <laughs> is exercising discretion and sometimes they aren't always the most popular decisions the best decisions are not always the most popular so i'm gonna go against my better judgment and i'll release the episode i'll put it up if y'all can tell i'm not feeling well so i'm just not here for his antics um we went on our vacation to the dominican republic i wasn't you were you. there I'm glad I was it for you. It was a good time. It was nice yeah. to be away. It was nice to be what on vacation. What was your favorite part? <laughs> the Dominican Republic. Well, this, this is a very broad and general way of saying it. But how, um, ah, further, what was your favorite, what was your favorite part of the, the trip? I liked the whole trip. I liked being away. I liked and being on vacation. There's one part that, that was more enjoyable to you than, than the rest. Having sex. That was mine too. <laughs> I'm glad you said it. So I have to say, it. yeah, that vacation sex be hidden way different than the. Uh, I just got done working my nine to five and putting these three kids to bed. Sex It's just so so much better, so much more lively, um, animated, disrespectful in a good way. Like 
disrespectful. Yeah, what? like people, you know, yelling at you, cussing at you. We both got long hair. Stuff be getting pulled. Like, but it's it's a good disrespect. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're adults. This, we is, an, adults. this is an adult show. It is. You right? have the, we're married. You have explicit on the, our podcast, right? We got the. We got the you have the explicit yeah. when it aired. Okay. I mean, not the like the on the CD covers from back in the day, but it's labeled as explicit okay. content. Right. Yeah. As long as people know. I mean, yeah. I mean, married people have sex. They do. It's how and most when, people when, have kids. And, and when married people with kids, their once in a lifetime opportunity that they get to go on vacation <laughs> with only one kid. They have vacation, married vacation sex. That's true. It's great. I'm glad you enjoyed yourself. Yeah. And Jessica was a whole other person. I, didn't, I don't know. She, I was like, I don't know who this person is, but look, you need to come around a little bit more. I need to figure out how to, how to sneak you back across uh, international waters. In, international waters. Because, whew, let me tell you. Um, yeah, the, <laughs> the sex was great. But for me, I think the fact that it was finally, we talked about this, this was finally an opportunity to go on vacation. It's just, not to worry about work. I didn't take my phone. I didn't bring my laptop. I didn't bring nothing. All I brought was my iPad. And I didn't even use that because of the Wi-Fi situation. So um, it was just great to kind of, if I chose to, to be unplugged. Mm-hmm. I was as unplugged as I wanted to be. Um, and I'm not a big, I'm not a big water guy. Like I don't really like to jump in the water, go to the beach, get, you know. You don't? I enjoy the environment. Okay. I enjoy the presence of the beach. I don't necessarily love getting in the water. Now, we have, like, we had the girls, like, when we went to Charleston, we had Solace. Um, I'll get in the water with the girls, or, like, when we went to Mexico. But left to my, left with me, I don't, I'm a big water person. That might have something to do with the fact that one, I can't swim. Two, um, I had a fear of large bodies of water when I was a kid. Now, not so much, but there's not no real allure. Water doesn't have that allure, uh, as far as I'm concerned. But you know, we were there with family. Um, it was it was good to be there with family, but not have like those awkward interactions. You know what I'm saying? Because there's a difference between when how you hang out with somebody here. Then when you go somewhere and you're around them like 24 mm-hmm. seven, you sometimes you can learn things about people that maybe you didn't know or like the habits that you can get, get past when you only see them once every couple of weeks, they just become that much bigger because you're with them mm-hmm. every single day. Didn't have any of that. It was great. Fantastic. So was really able to let my hair down, even though it's up right now and, uh, got to speak a little bit of Spanish, like the little, uh, cafe, un cafe. I got to say to the maid when she came and made breakfast for us, you, know, you couldn't tell me nothing because she understood what I was saying because mm-hmm. I was speaking Spanish. I'm proud of you. Yeah. I said un cafe, a coffee. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was great. It, it was and I forgot what milk was but luckily it was on the bar it was on the carton <laughs> so i was like ah como se dice ah la leche yeah it was great um and one thing that oh i guess we should tell the airport story but uh when dude <laughs> well one thing that that kind of sucked was like for me being i guess you could say typical american i don't really think about how um impoverished other parts of the world are and getting from the airport to the resort like i feel like we drove through three different like classes of like Mm -hmm. living society um like there were just like little cement huts or structures that were kind of uh dissembled they were like living in them shacks shacks excuse me thank you it's chilling. Mm-hmm. I was like, "Dang, like, that's real." And I think, of course, we see that here, right? Like, you drive around Charlotte, you see tents. Like, it's not mm-hmm. uncommon to see somebody who's homeless or, or not well but, off. But it's it's not the same. Not the same, and um, just jarring if you're 
privileged enough to not really be around that to see that very often as, as I am. I'll make no um you know excuses or anything extremely privileged to to live the life that we live um but that was kind of uncomfortable for me i was like damn it's rough out here for people and here we are in our little limo drinking our champagne with a very large limo um, <laughs> going to limo. going to this resort a- to give people to cook for us clean for us be at every back and call um give us premium premium spirits People out here struggling, but I mean, I think and then I went uh, when we got there. Went and tried to find some cigars. <laughs> it was very quick. It was very. It was um, that deep moment I had passed very quickly. Typical, typical American. Yeah. So very much so American privilege. Um, the few times you I've, and I've heard people say this before where you only really feel American when you're not in America, especially if you're black. Um, because. Also if you're black. Because when you are black and you are, I mean, racist racism still happens. Like I'm, I don't know if I'm ever going to visit China or those kind of places, but for the most part, if you go to other countries where people are also minorities, you're just an American. Mm. So there's no, and I, I, I speak specifically from being like from Ghana. So when I go to Ghana, the, there's a word, obroni, and I grew up using that word referring to white people. When you're in Ghana and that word is used, it's essentially a foreigner. It's not specific to the color of your skin. It's just someone who's not from here. So granted, I am black. I'm a black person whose mother, father, grandparents, grandparents before them, no, one was from Europe, um, are from Ghana. Like, that's my root. I'm still referred to as, you know, a foreigner. A white person. A white person. <laughs> um, so. Well, they, they thought you were married to a white dude when you took solace there for the first time, right? Yeah, they thought they thought she was, they were praising her for so they ain't for They ain't ready for that, she, that high yellow blood. Well, she, not high yellow, but. She's done browned up since. Yeah. Um, but, uh, so, when you are, the luxury of being, American, in my opinion, doesn't really set in until you go to another country as a black person. And then you get to kind of live that American privilege. Uh, It becomes blanketed, whereas here it's just white privilege um, for the most part. But, um, you know, driving through um, Puerto Plata, it reminded me of Ghana. Like it's what I saw driving through Ghana. It's what I it's relatable to me. That's why I think I've always felt a relation to Latin American and South American countries, because in my opinion, it's not politically correct to say, but I mean, it's just the same people relocated, speak in Spanish or speak in French. So, you know, same climate for the most part. So you're, you're getting the same culture. The foods are very similar because it's the same people who were relocated and they had to adapt. So, um, it's it's not jarring when i look at it i'm like wow it's a reminder that like we are literally the same people um but like you were talking about someone's you know hut shack whatever and then comparing it to the tent that someone might live in here you know a homeless person might live in here and i would probably argue that the person who lives in that cement hut structure in the dominican republic is doing better at life than the person who's living in a tent here in the United States. Yeah, no argument. Probably. Um, but maybe, uh, I don't know. I guess maybe it's all relative, but I don't really want to dive into like a socioeconomic discussion. But um, you mentioned the food. Speaking of the food, um, it was good. Mm-hmm. You know, everything was, it was all inclusive resort. So every meal, you know, we didn't have to pay for anything. Um, and it was good. It was very good. It was delicious. Um, but it, uh, like after the second or third day, it started fighting back and it was vicious mm-hmm. and it ran through our entire family. Mm-hmm. Well, everybody who went like you, me and Silas. So, 
Oof. And of course, they didn't have two ply toilet paper over there because, of course, not nobody has two ply toilet paper. So it, it was good toilet paper. Felt yeah. like I was wiping my booty with paper mache, okay, and and, and it's just, that's not the type of circumstances. You know, you never want to have single ply toilet paper, right? But right. you especially don't want to have single if ply toilet paper. That's when because you don't fold your toilet paper right. I'm saying. If it was two ply, I wouldn't have to. No, you roll it into a ball and you're supposed to flatten it. I've been complaining about this to you for over a decade. So now. how, a couple things that we need to unpack. So number one, how I choose to wipe my butt cheeks is strictly my decision and my decision alone. If, if you. Number two. Whether my butt cheek wiping strategy is efficient or not does not let all of these businesses these hotels these resorts off the hook for not at least offering their customers their clientele the option of having to apply toilet paper yeah i should at least i should at least be able to pick do i want single ply do i want to upcharge 50 cents extra per night or what i'll take it give me the two ply every time and back to my story. It was rough. Well, what made it even rougher is the fact that I had to literally utilize paper mache to get myself out of each situation. Now I found myself on that toilet because it was rough. It's like I told mom when we came back. It was like there are times where I didn't know. <laughs> like, this is too much. I, I had I, you know, I had I had the runs. And I didn't, I didn't know what. This is not what people signed up what for. What was what? With this episode. It was just, I'm it was sorry, like yo. stray runs. It was horrible, but the food was good. Like so, I kept putting myself in that situation because I kept eating the food. One, one, I'm in, I'm in the Dominican Republic, so I can't be like, yo, you know, over next day air me some some bojangles or whatever. I can't do that. Bojangles will do the same thing to you. That's why I don't eat bojangles. Bojangles will not. Bojangles, Bojangles has never. You. I don't eat Bojangles. Never betrayed it's, my it's stomach like. Simply, it has mine. That's why I don't. Eat that's because you. That's because you. No, you don't, you no, don't, you disrespect I it. Eat real food, and Bojangles is not real food. Real food. Um, it really just comes back. I mean, you just got traveler's diarrhea. That's it. No. Nah. It's cross. That's why I, when I travel, I try to avoid buffets at all costs. I honestly think it was that big party with the outside food that really set us up. You know, I think about it, that is, it did start happening after that. That's why I avoid. Yeah. I, I know everyone loves the all inclusive buffets. No, I don't like American don't. buffets. Buffets are trashy to me. You got all these hands touching ladles, and then you touch the ladle, and it's just back. It's just for me, it's germs. You got kids touching, picking their nose, touching this coffin. I hate buffets. So we were, we did not, we hadn't eaten at a single buffet. They came to our our villa. They prepared breakfast for us. Every time we ate a meal, it was at a restaurant. The only exception was the big extravaganza on Sunday. Uh, and that all the food was out. It was an outside buffet. It was massive. Probably the biggest buffet food options I'd ever had. But it was outside. The Dominican Republic was probably has more flies per capita than any place I've ever been in my entire life. So flies are disgusting. They land on feces and then they land on food and everywhere they land, they drop their bacteria. So it, it, it's inevitable. Um, unless you're from there and your stomach is already used to it, you're going to get sick, but it's better to get sick at the end of your trip than at the beginning. So fortunately for enough for me, um, I actually didn't get sick per se. Um, I had, I had the runs I had the bubble guts, but, I wasn't sick because after every time I emptied a load, I was good mm -hmm. until the next time I ate again. And then, of course, you know, um, which was good because the last international trip we took, I got sick. Mm -hmm. um, usually anytime we take a trip, I get sick, whether mm -hmm. it's international or domestic. So um, this was a win for me. I'll take if if I have to have if, if it comes down to either being sick or having the BGs every time we go somewhere, I'll take the BGs. Every single time. It's just, if it's domestically, I'm bringing my two-ply toilet paper. Like, I'm not. I haven't given these companies way too many chances. So I'm just going to keep the betterment of my butt in my hands. 
and I'm just going to start traveling with two play. And I don't want to hear any, any judgment or anything from you. Okay. It's my butt. Okay. Thanks. And I don't want to hear you talking about whether I fold or roll. That's, that's nobody's, that's nobody's business but mine. Okay. <sighs> so disrespectful. Oh, so the airport. So we get to, uh, we flew straight. We flew, we flew direct from Charlotte to Porta Plata. And um, I don't travel. I don't. It's not something I really do, internationally at least. So I used to travel for work, but, you know, now, not even that, not so much. So we get there, go through customs, um, and we got the passports and everything. It was actually probably a more se- pretty seamless trip, I think, in terms of the, the actual traveling, I would say, mm-hmm. except for getting home. But go through customs, uh, good, where you, you're good, I'm good, South is good. We go to get our bags. We got our bags. They showed up timely. Like, we were straight. We were just waiting for everybody else and then to hop in the limo. So I noticed, um, did he come? He didn't come until we started making our way toward the exit, Once right? Once we went through that screener, who would determine yeah. if our bags got screened? Oh, yeah, yeah, um, He just kind of walked up. And he was talking to me, but then also like grabbed my bags. And then he asked where we were staying. So he kind of made it, it came off as he was like the person who was taking us to our vehicle. Your handler. But then it's, then I I caught on because in Ghana, the same thing happened. It is the same thing. Yeah. See, I had no context. So me, I was like, oh, this is a really nice, like airport attendant. Like you would never. Charlotte, any any major city, like like TSA people, they see you, they like try not to make eye contact, like you're that kiosk salesperson at the mall, like they just look away and they walk right past you. So to get assistance at an airport, I was I was overwhelmed. I was I was, I was happy because you know we had some we had some sizable uh, luggage. So uh, Jess and Jessica speaks uh, fairly fluent Spanish, or can at least hold a conversation or get an answer or whatever. So she's talking to dude. Um, I got, I got solace and we're, we're walking out and we get into this big breezeway area or this big lobby cause we're waiting on, um, some other family members and their, uh, their bag situation. And so dude stops, and, you know, he was just sitting there waiting and chilling. He would say something every once in a while and, you know, glance a smile or whatever. Um, and then I guess that at a certain point he realized that it would, it would, we'd be a while and we, we were mm-hmm. a while. And uh, he kind of like pushed our bags to the side. And so that's when I kind of realized that, okay, so he's not who you thought he was. And I'm realizing that, oh, I thought he was going to help us like get our bags into the car or whatever. And uh, he pretty much, you know, started, he's made it, made it known that he was getting ready to leave. And so he was like, you got something for me. And he actually said, he said, you got something for me? In my mind, I'm like, I'm like, all right. So I gave him pound. I stuck my fist out to give him pound, and he dapped me, pounded me up, he pounded me back, yeah. and then he walked away. So I thought he was good. This is why I don't take David anywhere. Because number one, I didn't ask you to grab my bags, and number two, you all know if you don't know, you should know how how frugal I am, and I know it drives my wife crazy. So I'm not out cheap. here. I'm not. I'm not dying to give anybody tips or nothing. I'll tip like if I go to a restaurant, but I'm sorry. I mean, I forgot to get cash. From so he, ATM so he would, I mean, I, and I noticed in his eye, there was like a glance of disappointment. And, um, you know, that look somebody gives you when they're like cussing you out and like calling you like something really foul in, in their mind. So he kind of gave me some of that, but he walked away. He, he could have caused a rockets if he wanted to, but he took, but he took the pound, which confused me because I thought we, we were on the same page. No. But apparently we weren't. Um, <laughs> and then it wasn't until we walked away. I looked, I looked at Jess and of course she's just like shaking her head. And I was like, did he want money? And she was like, yes. I was like, oh. But I didn't have any anyway. So he'd have been disappointed regardless. Mm-hmm. So at least I gave him the pound. Because that's respect. Yeah. He can go buy dinner that's, with the pound. That's appreciation. Look, he working. His salary, his hourly he's wage. He's a volunteer. Is, he's a, oh, they don't even. He's a volunteer. Yes. Oh, so that makes sense. That's why they hustle you for the okay. But if you're a volunteer, you you know you take the risk knowing that you may not get mm-hmm. you know get a tip. 
Oh, I didn't know they were volunteers. I thought they at least got like a little hourly joint. No, his shirt <laughs> said volunteer. Doesn't say well. I didn't pay attention. Oh wow. Well. Um, I feel I feel slightly worse now, but not too much. Um, you're not the only one who's done that to him. You're not the last. I'm saying, how are you gonna roll up on me it's like just... voluntarily, volunteer and be like, you got something for me? Like you can get this pound, bro. That's res- but that's respect. That pound is that. That's universal. Everybody know what that is. Mm-hmm. And he took it. So that's payment. That's receipt. But, you know, that's consent of payment. So if that's what makes you feel better about yourself, let him go. Let him go. Bless somebody else. Pay it forward. I'm saying. Then we get outside and people coming at you. They they just smelling. They just smell blood. Sharks in the water trying to get you. Knowing you American. Know you don't speak no Spanish probably. And oh, you got you got money. You break. It's like nah, man. Get away from me. I don't know you. I'll flash your wads of pesos in front of me. Like, I'm supposed to be impressed? You think you're going to get over on me? Like, nah, get out of here. So. Because everybody your friend when you come out the airport. Like, everybody's nice. Like, everybody's trying to act like they're holding a the sign for you. Like, you got to get in the car. Man, you getting, I imagine you're getting some of them cars. <laughs> you don't make it. You end up on uh, Dateline NBC special, man. Nah, you're not about to get me. I got too much life left to live. Got three beautiful girls I got to see get married. Nah, no, sir. So, um, I had a lot of fun on the trip. If you can't tell, it was, it was a great time, but stories obviously will, as we reminisce, we'll, we'll make it the best, but, um, the glasses, these cups. Oh yeah. Talk about them. My, um, my dearest baby cousin, Georgia, uh, we were binge watching uh, Love is Blind and I think The Ultimatum. Um, so we kind of had like a little book club, viewers club text thread that we were going back and forth. So I had mentioned that I really loved the the glassware that they used. They had these special, I think they're silver and maybe they're gold. One of the two. It's like a rose gold. Yeah. Um, glasses that they use on on every episode of the show i I don't know the company who they talked about in one of the reunions but it's like it's mandated that everybody drink out of those cups or glasses so i admired them and i told her well of course she didn't like them but um at the time my birthday was coming up so she said she would find me so she she hunted down a few options and she sent me some pictures um and I said that I liked these ones. So, you know, on the outside, they're black, but on the inside, they're, they've got a rose gold tint to them. But of course, when she um, went to order them, they were backlog because it was still, you know, that point of the pandemic where things weren't right. available. So she said, they said it's not going to arrive until July. So this is back in like February. Completely forgot. Completely forgot. So we're traveling, we're traveling, getting a UPS notification that I got a shipment coming. And I was like, I intentionally didn't order anything to be delivered while we were out. Um, so I didn't know what it was. So we get home and it was a couple of days because our neighborhood was holding it. And um, they David brings it in. So I'm opening it and I'm still trying to figure it out. So I open the box and then there's a wrapper. So I pull the wrapper out and the kids start like tearing, just and almost like Arr, trying to bite it. Um, and then I pull one so out. So it was her baby, not her dog, by the way. Oh, <laughs> um, and then I pull one out. She does growl though. She, Arr, she's in this weird growl phase. Pull one out and then my heart was like, just so happy. Um, one, because it's like a birthday gift in July. Granted, it was supposed to be for March, but it's nice, like a belated birthday gift. Um, yeah. That was just really, really sweet. And I just like them. Um, so it's going to be my special my special glassware. Um, I had planned on making an Aperol spritz and drinking, that being the first drink I drink out of it. But I just haven't felt like drinking since we got back from our trip. Um, I kind of went hard. It's the BGs. <laughs> it's not the BGs. I just... I the just BGs got to. you, though. You weren't immune from the BGs. I, I wasn't, but I, my body was also going through a lot of other okay. things. So it, it was just a culmination of everything. So, um, yeah, so I'm drinking a, it's just like a hydration drink, um, powder drink with water. But I'm just so happy about this, these glasses. Like they just, and they're just so, they're like, they're sexy, they're sleek. They're nice glasses. So um, thank you, Esquire, for my 
belated birthday gift and you know what in the future if you're gonna get someone like multiple because she already got me a birthday gift she got me a whole outfit um but if you're gonna get someone multiple gifts like you should schedule one to show up months later you got multiple gifts huh you got multiple gifts yeah i'm assuming mine are just like super back ordered because it's almost november again <laughs> i haven't got anything so that's between you and her I'm just saying. but it was nice like almost six months after my birthday to get a birthday some, gift um some socks get some, over yourself some socks or something um, some white some white beaters you get a I, happy tops. birthday so so yeah I didn't, I, she actually didn't wish me happy birthday this year either are you sure because it's not your birthday yet no last year i mean are you sure she hit me up mm-hmm. i was actually i don't i don't i'm not one of these people who like leo season or scorpio season or whatever see like i'm not really into the signs and um after i turned like 25 wasn't really into birthdays either um so i'm not somebody who gets like really amped up about their birthdays or like yeah holds it'll it be like february let me, let and you're like finish. i want this for my birthday like nobody's um, talking about your birthday no, in february. Not, yes you have no, I what, do you what did i say what, what did i tell you i wanted a trip no oh, that was different because i knew you're planning something anyway so i might as well just say yeah, I, I wasn't want, planning I a trip, a trip. Okay, but anyway, so I'm not really one of these people who hypes their birthdays up and like holds grudges if people don't wish them happy birthday. But I was actually a little disappointed no, that she didn't wish that. it to me. She'll see. She probably won't. I don't she know that she won't. watched or listen listens anymore. Oh really? I mean, she. I. I. You can tell when someone listens because they come at you. She doesn't come at me, so I'm. Yeah, just she's just, probably busy. She is. She is a whole. Attorney. Yeah. Every time I see her, she's at a different high end restaurant. <laughs> every time I see her, Instagrams. <laughs> Stop coming for my cousin. No, that wasn't a, that wasn't a slight. I mean, it's just I would love to be able to every other day that I post a reel or a story that it'd be at a high end restaurant that my cousin and her husband probably couldn't get into. Uh, I would speak for yourself. I can get into high end restaurants. You could talk your way into it. That's different. I could get into a high end restaurant. No, whatever. I can maybe like DoorDash. It's just over. <laughs> you pick up around the wow. corner. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I see. Okay. Uh, anyway. Ew. You're so easy, man. We get so easy. Um. But no, that's it's that's a lovely. You know I me. Mean? I'm I'm all for it anytime somebody uh, does something nice for you. So, uh, and it is funny because we would actually watch the show. And be like, man, those glasses are really nice. Yeah. You know and she actually them. um she actually found them and bought them for you. So I think that's great. From a store called Williams Sonoma. So that makes it even more special. Yeah, it's got our dog's name in it. That's <laughs> the way you said it. Sonoma was like, Arr. she was. <laughs> she got the little girl has two teeth, but she acts she like she has two teeth right here, and a she will. mouthful. You will give her food, and she like you yes. only have two teeth, and they're in the front. Um, but yeah, she was growling, and, and then she was um, she was chewing on the little wrapper. Babies are crazy. Yo, know, dare I say? I don't know if I should do it. I don't want to jinx this. But um, I feel like we're getting ready to turn a corner in the uh, the sleep patterns of our two youngest children. Um, and granted, we were away for like four or five days. But I can't remember the last time two like didn't sleep through the night. Or the last time two frequently didn't sleep through the night. So mm-hmm. like she's she's, she's getting good yeah getting old but you hear the horror stories right my parents are like oh my god so and so didn't leave our bed till like five mm-hmm. and i'm counting my head i'm like five god damn that's like we still got so i'm just like hoping um in sonoma i know she still has that like at least you're guaranteed to get like at least one wake up um i feel like if we were to look at it on a on a scale she's been sort of trending a little later mm-hmm. into the morning here recently so yeah, she's unless she gives you that that poop that she's been holding for a couple she of did days. This morning she pooped. She woke yeah. up at five. Um, and she pooped, but she she still found. I mean, I was already going through my own stuff, so I was kind of in and out of sleep. But she would make no. She would wail like she was getting ready to wake up. So then I wouldn't go back to sleep, anticipating she'd wake up, and then she wouldn't actually wake up. So that's how um, she gets me when you travel. She make she like give all the signals. That she's away. And then you warm up that bottle. And then she fall back asleep. Like the whole night. I was so mad that one night. I was like. Because I knew she was going. Like why wouldn't she wake up? Mm-hmm. She's been waking up. That's what she does. 
Yeah, she's just, a whole bottle. She's just something else. Cause I, we, you know, she can sleep through the night. It's like almost like she just chooses not to. Like, oh, I'm home. And now she stands. So like, you wake up. Like yeah, I got, I got her the other morning. She's waiting for you. Um, and you're already, and you're upset, right? Because all the things you got to do, like, oh my fine. And it's, like, it's never when like you're getting ready to fall asleep. It's always when you're like fairly past rim, right? So you wake up, you disoriented. You're like, God, damn, this kid, you gotta walk down to the down the hall, the other side of the house, and then you open the door, and she's just like, <laughs> it's like, nah, the same playtime. That's my boo. Though. But then you hold her, and then you like, okay, mm-hmm. I guess you're okay. Now she's doing the whole like she's learned like kisses. So sometimes she'll like if I prompt her, she'll come for a kiss. But other times she'll just kind of like throw her head into my face. And that's, that's, that's her way of saying she wants a kiss. It, it's awesome. so the parental relationship is so psychologically toxic because you literally have a person who tortures you. Selfish. But all you can do is love them. It's not it's not it's not healthy. It's so crazy how uh like leadership in the corporate sense, like management and parenthood. There's like so many parallels. Like not saying that adults who work for you are like kids mm-hmm. or yeah, your they kids. Are. They are. Um but but you think think about the kids, right? Like you're selfish. Like everything's about you. Mm-hmm. I want this. I need this. This isn't. This isn't comfortable. This these clothes aren't comfortable. Mm-hmm. I don't like. I don't want that to eat. Can I have this? Can I have that? I'm mean, like, you gonna ask me how I'm doing? You gonna say good morning, Daddy? How was your sleep? How you doing? How you feeling? It's not about. Did the you. Lakers win last? Like like nothing. It's not about you. Like nobody checks on on parents. <laughs> nobody checks on nobody checks on leaders. So if you out there mm-hmm. and you have a boss who's good to you, checks in on you, treats you well, treats you fairly, check in on them every once in a while. If you have a parent who's still with us and they are decent to you, check in on them. If you have any friends. No, because it'd be your parents who don't even ask about you. This is true. Because left. I mean, my mom will shoot me a text every once in a while. My dad, psh, unless he needs something. I always know when he needs something because it'll be like, he'll send me a text, be like, call me whenever you get a minute. And people, you got to do that. You got to do that. People don't even recognize their own patterns to switch it up. And call him and be like, yeah, what's up? <laughs> You're like, oh, I need some. Like, oh, I thought you were calling to ask how your son was doing. No, they don't care. <laughs> like, I thought maybe you I, might be interested you know in knowing, really, like, as a 34-year-old man, what my life is like right now. you know what really set it off for me? We went to his family. They had a cookout. And I walked into this room, the house. I'm holding Sonoma. When I tell you, everyone just simply said, oh, the baby nobody acknowledged me and yeah i joked about it but it hurt it really did hurt because it's like one this baby didn't float into this room by herself literally somebody is holding this this person but the simple fact that every and 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 it's human nature people are guilty of it and because people are guilty of it i try so much not to acknowledge children i'm not guilty of it i'm like i'm like like michael jordan kids (laughs) i (laughs) I don't care about my kids not to acknowledge kids to like especially like new parents and new moms i just be like how are you doing because people hard, are people forget it's rough the human of which you are it's rough out here it just becomes about this little person you know my mom she be trying to, and of course we're roasting my parents but we're having we're doing this all in good fun we do this in their presence too so that's why i feel comfortable doing it but moms always be like who was the last time you came down to russian rose like when was the last, last time, time you, you me- when was the last time you messaged me for me <laughs> and not the girls just huh? said hey we're gonna come come over and hang at your house we're gonna come, we're gonna come it's not like we don't have 50 11 jobs three kids we don't come play jenga house that we try to maintain or boggle. people don't yeah People don't want, we want to come. Yeah. We want to see you mm-hmm. independent. Yep. Schedule of your little tax, schedule, of your little tax write-offs. Schedule a lunch date. 
at random pop up. Let's go to the mall. Let's do it. Let's go to a boutique. Let's no. go get our nails done. No, people don't go do get that. our feet beat. People don't do that. Nah, they're nothing. not concerned about us. Hmm. It's not the babies, how yeah. the girls. Oh, I got solace. This I got something with this. I'm making the girls this. When was my wife still waiting on it? On her, what is a dress? I'm waiting on some pajama pants, pajama and a, pants, and a quilt, and a quilt. I just want, I've always wanted my own blanket that someone has. I had all these friends who had these blankets and Can't quilts, get it. but guess what? That let you pop another baby out. How, how quick will that quilt be here for the, for the baby? The, the day the baby's born, it the might quilt. be here before the baby gets here. And the only reason that it might wait for the baby so that she can have a name. It's disrespectful. These it parents, is. these parents ain't, it is. they ain't loyal. I remember one time I showed up, this was before the other kids, I was working and I was driving up 85 North from South Carolina. Mm-hmm. So I was like, let me just pop over. It's a rough ride. To Gastonia. 85 one, to use South the bathroom, Carolina is rough. Yeah. But two, like, see my parents. And these people were like, where's, where's Solace? And why are you here without a kid? I, I, I can't show up. You have no you you have no value unless you have unless you have a kids. grandchild with you. So now I feel like if I ever just went over there alone, it would just be like crickets. Yeah, let's be sitting there looking at each other. It's like so, you they came, actually they may not even acknowledge you. They'd they be probably like, wouldn't. They'd be like, oh, well, come in. Yeah. So it's just don't get comfortable, but come in. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's. I'd be like that. So be better to 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 people with kids. Well, you got a friend because we're hanging on Maybe by a they, very very thin thread. Mm-hmm. Y'all yeah, ain't seen us. Y'all yeah, seen us for two weeks. We only vacationed for one of them. Ask yourself, why weren't we here for that la- that other week? It's hard out here. Are we done? All right, yeah, we're done. Okay. Um, breaking news. Speaking of big babies, uh, your boy got uh, his spot rated. Let's stop. Okay, before we go into <laughs> this whole need to give possession yeah. of someone to other people that's your dude that's your that's not your guy he's not my guy Jess. but i will say when i was young when i was like an early teenager i used to do a, a, an impression of him i can't i haven't done it in years but i used to do an impression that's your guy he's not my guy no though. but no but it's it's, it's your, it's your dude <laughs> it's your, it's your, just give him to america because they're the people who, who who should claim him that's your man no right. so we're recording this on uh it's monday night uh august 8th is it only monday yeah august 8th, august 8th. um i really thought former was- former president donald trump Not his his guy. moral jessica's aka jessica's homeboy um his residence mar-a-lago 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 was raided by the fbi at the direction of the very FBI director that Trump appointed before he uh, before he went on his way. Mm. So very interesting. Um, not a history buff. I would I would venture to assume probably the first president acting or not to have his home raided by the FBI. Maybe not first, but Nixon it's not ba- Nixon. Ba- it's not common. Raided. It's not common. No. Um. So of course Twitter's having a field day with it, staying off of it. Um, but uh, yeah, this is this is broke. So I don't I don't have no no context, no no information. I, don't, I, I haven't got checked in with my sources um, and on the ground in Mar-a-Lago. But uh, yeah, busy few weeks from actually. I mean, just I mean, a federal judge had to approve it. We've had, to, had, had to approve but the rate. I'm not so. even going to get like any feelings on the matter because this man has been able to slip. Dude's got so many lives. Every everything that sh- for whatever he should you be know, in jail for, he's not, been able to slip it. And it's so crazy. Like you think of all like the like the biggest scammers mm-hmm. and the biggest criminals. It was always like some small oh, yeah. or something close to them that tripped them up. Like Bernie Madoff, if it weren't for the recession, like Bernie Madoff still be still yeah, be scamming that's people. True. Still be hustling people. Mm-hmm. It was a once in a one like a once in a lifetime event. Like who could have assumed that, you know, two thousand eight recession happened and then he got caught. We'll see what happens. That's no. crazy. I'm not. Re- I'm still not investing any expectation that he's going to be held to any kind of account. But oh, we'll see. Still crazy. So I'm. I'm excited to finish recording. 
and to act like I'm going to go do some more work, uh, like for my, my day job. So I can just really just sit on Twitter and see what people, although I can't be up too late cause I gotta, I gotta get up early in the morning. But, um, yeah, it's crazy. Spot got raided. It's wild. Like, can you imagine? And we are home chilling. Maybe we're recording Rush Vibes. Maybe we're watching our youngest eat packaging tape or whatever she she does. And then you get the knock on the door. Do they knock or don't they just bust open? I feel like they knock and then they're it's like, because they got sure they got to show you the warrant, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's drug dealers that they bust. But then after the they door. show you the warrant, then you got to step aside or they <laughs> they come in and then they just start turning. Like, I wonder. They're so obnoxious. I have to ask. I got to ask Mark because I'm wondering, because the only experience I have with police raids are television. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like you said, they're so extra. Like, they ripping, like, like Cow- cutting like, open couch cushions, <laughs> what am I putting turning over furniture, pillowcases, ripping books. Like, <laughs> the Bible? Like, what so, you think I'm going to put in the word? And I wonder, like, is that real? Like, do they really just completely trash your house and then you just they just walk out like okay thanks appreciate the hospitality and they walk out like bro you just they're obnoxious just and literally I think flip my I house upside this, down it's so, just the simple act of like they can you yeah what and do you have to say legally we they have a warrant that says we're supposed to tear this place apart and do you can't do nothing about it um so one i wonder if that's true if that's actually how they do it and two i wonder if that's what they did tomorrow long because that's a big house it's a big property yeah, they probably annihilated Mar-a-Lago. That's just crazy to me. I went. I. I. I, I wonder. Um, I can't wait till we're like seventy three, and you're like what seventy seven or something, and they make the like the movie. And they're not gonna wait that long. No, they're no, because I'm not gonna count on the movie that comes out while we're still young. I'm gonna count on the movie that our grandkids make. And that okay. that movie is going to be fire because they'll have more details. They can't make it within the next 10 years because I feel like there's still so much to unfold. Yeah. Like in the next 30 to 40 years, they are going to make like trumped. That's yeah. what's going to be called. Trump. It's going to be Trump apostrophe D trumped. I get that's, down with that. Yeah. That's a nice name. Um, <laughs> I didn't even do that on purpose. Oh, Trump vibes. <laughs> no, because I said, because I did the same thing with Rush. What? I said Trump apostrophe D oh. and then I looked over and realized that that's what yeah, I yeah. named our podcast yeah. Um, yeah. yeah when that generation like gets all the facts and they make it's like with Nixon like they made Nixon movies but like I feel like the one of our generation generation has more fact more interviews more scholarly criteria yeah. you know Trump put out a statement no one cares so it's crazy because I don't, care. I, I, I don't know if he actually writes, like if if his statements are from the first person, because no, they they refer to himself in the third. But in the, and if you read it, it sounds as if he's the one writing it. What but they're con- but he Donald constantly Trump. but he constantly shifts to the third. But it is he is I've never obviously I've never met him, but I've never been exposed to such a fascinating person like. And I don't know that it's necessarily in an endearing way, but he, the Trump experience is just fascinating. Like I've never, like he puts it like, these are official statements from a president, a former president. And they read like somebody like a spoiled rich kid in eighth grade who he's a spoiled rich kid. Yeah, but he's like 70, what is it, 74, 75? He's, he's in his 70s. If you don't get challenged to grow up, you won't grow up. Oh, so crazy. And then there was a line, because I, I glanced at a statement that he that he, that he he released today. It was like, they even broke into my safe. <laughs> <laughs> like poor Trump, the FBI broke into his safe. Uh, and, uh, is, is such, I, I, there are times it was seemingly horrible for the country uh socially when he was president but there was so much content out there when he was president oh my goodness i miss it i wish i could have the content without having him actually in um back in that's probably gonna be like a hit tv show for the next generation someone's gonna write a show where it's just like a chaotic president who just does things consistently (sighs) to challenge his entire Twitter, white Twitter hasn't been the same. I, I'll say it. 
and that, and, and that could be because we don't that, remember that we have a president that could be good or bad but twitter has not been the same since they booted him off you know they uh they suspended your girl too marjorie taylor green she's not <laughs> stop they, affiliating these people to me they uh they they booted her off her uh, personal account i guess she was telling uh, alternative they're, facts they're, what's the new political party they're trying to push oh the forward party is your boy um, the what party? <laughs> is your boy uh andrew yang no 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 the the republicans it's like the something christian uh, conservative christian i don't know they're like I'm, oh but uh speaking of what about kansas huh that barbecue wow that's crazy team kansas team <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> you ain't never in your life been Team Kansas Look, or nothing related I to Kansas. Only ever fly Yo. over Kansas. I, Yo, because it's definitely a flyover state. It's a flyover but state. And I've been to Arkansas, Kansas, which is named after there, Kansas. I could probably count on one hand fewer, like the number of more conservative states. I don't even know probably on Kansas's one hand. identity outside of barbecue. Like, what does Kansas have to offer? Uh, Jayhawks. The basketball team. Kansas. University. Oh, it was like professional. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> they might yeah. want to get their stats because, I mean, I'm not in, in the vein of basketball, um, but I know the sports team. That's yeah. It. Jayhawks. I mean, I don't, I, don't, I don't know a lot about Kansas other than. They're really is ultra, probably not ultra conservative, but a I very conservative know state. Nothing about their political. Like I don't know, I don't hear about Kansas ever. And then Kansas just ended up in the news because True Bill snitching on you says I got a large transaction. What would you what you buy? Groceries. A hundred dollars more than the budget I gave you. It's kind of weed off. See, we're gonna come back to this. We're gonna put a pen in no, this, and we're gonna come back. No, we're gonna come more. back. They charge you more because they're gonna, weighted items. We're gonna come back. We're gonna, we're gonna come back to this. But Kansas, yeah. So if y'all don't know what I'm talking about, um, Kansas, uh, they voted on um, an amendment, I think, or some some they form had, of yeah. They had a law that would go into effect once Roe v. Were, Roe yeah. versus Wade was overturned, but and they allowed the public to vote on, it, as opposed to just the the state congress enacting it mm -hmm. um they allowed the people to vote on it. and then it was like 60 40 it was um, ridiculous odds yeah percent voted not in fate and not in favor of um the new law which is just crazy because mm -hmm. you would assume conservative state conserve pro conservative bill pro god bill <laughs> pro pro jesus bill that they would just go for it yeah. in droves and it wasn't the case so it's so it's it's so crazy because a lot of people have been talking about and i don't want to get ultra political because this isn't really that type of um podcast but like for so much of this year all you've heard is like oh democrats are gonna get they're gonna get thrashed in the midterms oh it's gonna be a red wave right i don't know i, I i've it's because it's like when obama first got in and then he had a, a democratic house and then it was like oh like democrats are gonna do whatever they want and they, they like still couldn't get stuff passed mm -mm. so it's weird i don't ever feel like whatever the main narrative is the main expectation is especially for election that's months off it's just too much time and there's too much stuff that could happen too much that could go wrong uh to really write anything off so i'm really curious to see i i'm not that huge the politics as I used to be, but come, I might have to, I might have to be back in front of TV watching my boy, the Megs of Pole numbers. Wolf Blitzer, my guy, it's my man. Yo, when he steps, when he retires, a little piece of me inside He's is gonna die. Retire. He's like eighty two right now. <laughs> Wolf Blitzer, yeah, well, them suits be fire. It's my guy. He's not retiring. No, nah, he can't. We can't let Wolf go. One, he's been old. For, he's of the generation. Wolf's never been. Yeah, Wolf's never he's been young. Of, he's of the Morgan Freemans. The yeah. Who else? The Larry King, who I completely forgot had died. Um, like those people who have just piece. always been old, even in their youth. So he's he's yeah. just the day that that comes, I'll be very I'll be very sad. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah this is really a mess around and find out kind of time i so i'm curious to see what's gonna happen man um apparently depending upon who you talk to like democrats could actually gain like i think three to five seats in the senate maybe just barely hold on to a majority in the house i just need us to get enough to not need joe manchin us democrats you democrat i'm whatever is convenient to me at the time <laughs> when i see You'll my paycheck be. and see how much taxes hey let's get some red up in this piece <laughs> all right when i don't hey. get maternity leave paid for i'm blue like yeah. just i'm you know i just flow with the wind whatever the spirit vibes me yeah. but no i'm i am so tired of the name joe mansion i'm tired of his fake democrat like it's like you're not really a democrat so why are you here yeah you're not you're not for just he's got a nice he's got a nice maserati though I don't, it's a real nice i don't care i've seen it i don't care not in person but i've seen it on on tv like who in west virginia has a maserati like what is west joe virginia? mansion west virginia is like the east coast version of kansas it's just like it's top like five poor states in the country right it, it has should, to be it's horrible yeah but because it was a coal mining state. can't be can't be too poor joe <laughs> that boy rolling around in a maserati yeah because he got all the state's money yeah that pack money that brings into to question the thought like um like people always talk about politicians and they're so greedy because you know they, they get their their big salaries um and it seems like most people who happen to find themselves in politics especially at the highest level somehow they just become uh well off wealthy rich um because i think about like the pastor that we talked about in the last in the unreleased uh episode of, of rush vibes who got robbed in brooklyn? brooklyn it's like that age-old debate like should a pastor make money not make money be rich um be so much more well off than the people he he or she uh serves over like should joe Manchin be driving around in a maserati when you are the, one of the senators for one of the poorest states in the country or a relatively poor state i mean i'm gonna say this it's gonna contradict it Contra i'm gonna contradict myself one because i don't like joe Manchin. no he shouldn't you haven't met but joe Manchin. i don't to not like no, joe Manchin. it always comes down to joe Manchin, and he never does like what the democrats need him so he's just fake like he's not a real democrat um, but I will say this. I never have stood on the idea that because someone is a man or woman of God, they should be poor. Um, there's my, but there's a difference between being poor. My foundational point is Jesus had an accountant. People who have accountants are not poor. He had someone who literally traveled with him and had to manage his finances. So with that being said, I feel like that in itself, I think when people hear, you know, blessed are the poor, the meek, all of this stuff, I think it's misinterpreted. Again, I go back to, mm -hmm. you know, the Bible is a book that is translated from multiple languages. And I think if you don't understand the Greek of which, or the language of which the original Bible was written, it is hard to use the proper term so i think certain words are just picked in to certain words are just picked because it's like this is the closest we can get to what they're trying to say but i don't necessarily believe that that's it like this this whole poor meek um depiction of this is how christians are supposed to be um i don't necessarily buy that um so when it comes to joe manchin yes but that's just because i think he's an ass and he just makes everything very difficult um when it comes to like christians like and pastors now i'm not saying you need a jet well um, buddy oh buddy got robbed with like five hundred thousand dollars worth he, of jewelry on. and he but he stole from a grandma so you know allegedly you know you reap what you sow i believe that part too um so yeah i <laughs> okay Cool. I mean, it's just, I'm just curious. I just thought that it would. Was that your Snapchat that went off? I don't have, I don't snap anything. Oh, okay. I mean, I'm just, my, the, the group I'm in, it, it goes off at odd times of the day. So maybe I'm just hearing ghost notifications. Um, yeah, I'm just, just curious. Just a thought that, uh, popped in my mind. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, Kansas. Interesting. So I, I feel like that's, has a lot of people like 
like oh like maybe this Roe v. Wade thing is like a like really like a uh, momentum point. changing issue. Um, there may have been like a lot of people who would consider themselves Democrats or likely Democrat Democratic voters who just really weren't excited about Biden. Like, bro, you ain't doing it for him. You got Trump up out of here, but that's it. That's it. You never really doing nothing for me. COVID twice in a month. But got everything. Like he's had like a really successful week. Like if you look at it from a policy standpoint, I don't know what he does. He do caught COVID twice and like them balling all week, uh, especially with this um, inflation reduction bill that they just passed. But anyways, um, and a lot of people just weren't really that excited. But Roe v. Wade. Maybe it's just this big, you know, these Democratic elections. conspiracy. Uh, hey, maybe I'm not I'm not the one to dabble in them, though, but uh switching gears because we're like what an hour and six but we haven't been here for a while so i feel like we got to make up for lost times oh we've been here you just didn't release it um will smith apologize i still haven't watched it you have not watched the will smith apology I've the not. five minute apology you ain't had five minutes to watch will smith's apology because no, the apology doesn't need to be that long it's will smith <laughs> i don't need a big monologue will, big willie i don't i, I don't i I don't care. I'm over the slap. Oh, um, you've reached. You've, you've got. You welcome. I've been. I mean, we've been waiting on you. Well, it was almost six months later. After when was, when was the Oscars in February? Either February or March. Were we in August? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. So I mean, it's six months later. I get it. You wanted to go to New Delhi and bond with some elephants and meditate and all that good stuff. I'm sleep on them. The, 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 I'm not sleeping on it. I'm just saying that therapeutic. You went through all of that. It took you six months. That to healing process apologize. that he's, he has okay. to go through. Well, um, he no. To be fair, he apologized on Instagram. So like a couple days later. You know, he apologized like around Chris Rock. No, he apologized to Chris. I feel like it wasn't like there was something that was disingenuous about it. Um, either I don't way. Know anything more disingenuous than slapping somebody. So. <laughs> Either way, I don't, I don't care. I, I, unless I've seen clips of it, but I have not made the effort to go watch it. I don't plan to make the effort to go watch it because I, I, I don't, I don't care. Yeah, it's a little different for me, um, you know, because I hold, I hold Will in high esteem. So uh, it was, it was good to see him on the seemingly on the path to healing uh, whatever needed to heal um, that caused him to, or contributed to him acting out uh, that way when he slapped Chris Rock on uh, live television. So uh, it's not easy to apologize, um, especially if you're a prideful person, if you're a really successful person, because you got to think about all these things, perception, am I going to come off this week, blah, 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 blah. So for someone like him to come out completely vulnerable um, and apologize, reiterate that what he did was not, was not right. And uh, talk about his thought process since then and what it was like for him in that moment and how he's trying to, uh, to move on. I think it was, it was kind of, it's like courageous because I think the word gets thrown around a lot, but I, I think it took um, some gumption, <laughs> and uh, I don't think that that should be dismissed. So I'm uh, I'm happy for him. I'm proud as, as as a man, as a black man who takes mental health seriously. Uh, I'm proud that he was able to take that step, and I hope he, um, Toby gets. You know, gets what he needs. Hope he gets that growth and that healing that he needs. That's important. It's a lot of damage and, and broken and hurt men walking around. Uh, a lot of animosity built up, and they just need that one moment for them to snap. And then, because you're a black man and you snap, you know, your life could be, you know, that action could be irreparable. Not everybody's Will Smith. So, um, I, I appreciated it. But since you haven't watched it, uh, it's not a whole lot of dialogue to be had. So, um, what else? What else is out there? So, I I, want to talk about the uh, 
the New York Times thing, but I haven't really, I've, I've read more of the reactions than the actual article. Mm-hmm. So I feel like this is, even though you haven't looked too much into it, I feel like you might have be the better person to give the synopsis than me. So I'm going to let you so do it. So this, and I don't know who wrote the, the op-ed. So this is a this is a, this is something that New York Times does. Where you they send feature, your story. you you can pitch your wedding and marriage story and they'll run it. So okay, it's not like this isn't like a one off. Oh, okay, cool. It's, but it's I mean maybe it is because of the the circ because of the story, but the article it's the feature itself is not um is not unique. It's something that the New York Times does. Okay, so, so from. The little that I've absorbed. This couple meets on Hinge. Dude cancels two dates, I believe, on the woman. Finally, like, links up with her in a Popeye's parking lot. Um, and it's important. He Not at Popeye's. In the parking lot. In the lot. parking lot. Yeah. They were having conversation. Um, the Popeye's line was long. Because they were waiting on spicy. So they went to... No. Either he, they or he went to KFC, either next door or across the street. He got a meal. Makes sense. She did not get a meal. Probably went hungry. He did not buy her a meal. Probably didn't ask him to. Um, he probably didn't offer. Doesn't matter. <laughs> you canceled twice on somebody. You sit them in a parking yeah, don't, lot. Don't, and don't, you, don't pay attention to me right now. I'm not. Um, I'm not being serious. In that moment, she realized he was her soulmate. <laughs> <laughs> she Ooh. marries him yeah so what i have concluded is that yet again men can get away with doing the bare minimum <laughs> you know what you know what it signals to me <laughs> jessica that men are the prize baby absolutely whoo men not, men gotta be the prize after that i'm not going to sit here and say that someone settled it is not my place to say that someone settled because I there are points in our relationship that I know someone could look at and be like Jessica settled. Um, Wait, what? <laughs> excuse, how many meals did you take me? me out in socks and slides and basketball shorts? It was hot. <laughs> we in North Carolina, baby. Summers be hot. I don't want to be sweating all over the place. So I'm not, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say. But you know, million, million, millionaire pro athletes walk around like that. You ain't a millionaire. No, but I'm saying, but if somebody doesn't follow basketball, they might see a shorty with, with, with a, with a, with a a player and and be like. There are instances where you, people will say that you settled for me. Mm -hmm. Regardless, I'm not going to put those words in on her. Sure. But I do have concerns as to why Sir thought he was such a prize or why she thought that the way of which their love came about was so phenomenal that the New York Times had to post it. But forget that. Subtract. subtract, Why wouldn't you want to be proud of you? Take away the fact that they submitted themselves. I need to know (laughs) what first year editor read that submission and said this so, is the one so this is funny not funny but this is this is where it gets interesting because now the theory on black twitter especially black woman twitter is that uh that what the new york times was doing was trying to uh, subconsciously uh, subliminally on low key on the down low like get in the minds of black women and tell them that it's okay to settle like like this type of behavior it's okay as long as you get your man as long as you get your ring that's the working theory uh some people said they canceled their new york times subscription some people canceled it which is weird to me because like you can get a new york times subscription for like a dollar a week now it's like why would you i mean there's to be some good stuff in there crossword puzzles and stuff two dollars a year yeah it's not bad it's more than it's less than it used to be i mean <laughs> I feel as if black women have been told to settle in subliminal ways for years upon years. Um, 
So that's that's not even our, a conversation that we need to have the effort, put the effort into having because I, I'm, I'm not a white woman or a Latina or an Asian. I can't speak to how, you know, relationships are discussed or treated or seen um, for those those demographics. I'm a black woman. Um, and I know what my fellow black women have dealt with. I know to an extent what I have dealt with. I know the things that What'd people have said to, you know, look past. It's no big deal. Um, and I know the things that people say, well, it could be worse. And I think that is the problem we have with a lot of relationships, which is why a lot of men aren't held to standards. And a lot of women are disappointed in relationships because we are conditioned to just we are conditioned to take the bare minimum. And it's like when people talk about Atlanta, I used to joke that I would never move to Atlanta unless I was bringing a husband with me because it was like five women to every single straight black man. Um, it's nice numbers. If you're of the bachelor type, you don't even have to be of the bachelor type. You have options. Um, is so there was a time maybe like 10 years ago where women in Atlanta were struggling you know they were professional they were making good money couldn't find a man so they had dudes like living on, on their living with them that they knew were blatantly having relationships with other people but because the because we are taught as a woman your value comes from your the home you keep the the man you have the children you have you're just like okay i'll tolerate this because i need to have a ring i have had friends who have forced to get married to people that deep down i know that they knew they shouldn't have married and they ended up divorced because they just understand that by a certain age i need to have a husband and i need to have kids because if i don't my i've depreciated and that's not how life should be and i can only say this be, I, I can only say this as an observer not an experiencer because i was married at 24 so i don't understand the struggle of dating apps and being ghosted and netflix and chilling and cuffing season and all of that stuff maybe cuffing season a little bit but, <laughs> but netflix and chill too we do that now no we don't we could do it then. no we don't we we netflix, could. you go to sleep couch is comfortable you don't you don't you skip the chill part couch is comfortable that's all i gotta say anyway but we marry people we have our problems too that can be a whole nother episode anyway um what are you talking about married life is great so it's perfect <laughs> no problems at all wasn't i not talking to you for like four hours today and the only reason it took that long is because you couldn't every time i can't try to come upstairs and apologize you was in a damn meeting i feel like it was the same meeting for like three hours it probably was um so as an observer i've seen the bs that women black women have had to deal with so you know she writes i don't know if she wrote the article or he wrote the article but i knew he was my soulmate to me personally it came off of as i don't know that i can get better than this or i don't know that i just it could be subconsciously i don't know that i deserve better than this with that being said we are not in the day-to-day -day of their relationship so yeah it may have come off as he's a bum who bought himself kfc who ghosted her two times um but she settled for him but through the nuances people grow people people evolve people change yeah. like where i am right now i couldn't have been with the david of 2011 that would not have worked and maybe and vice versa the David of now could not have been with the Jessica of 2011. I was still pretty good back then. Um, so we've evolved to who we are now. So we don't know the intricacies of their relationship. We don't know how he went from buying himself a meal in KFC parking lot to becoming her husband and maybe over time maybe there was something he said maybe there was something an action he did that we don't see because we weren't in that car we didn't feel that connection but it was enough for her to have the confirmation I'm old school so personally I've always felt that it's the man who's supposed to know that this is his soulmate um but again I'm a traditionalist in that sense 
come for me if you want to. I don't care. So her saying like, I knew he was my soulmate. I don't know because men be finicky. Like, how do you know she sounds like that? She just looked like she sounded like Mm -hmm. that. Um, But this is me. I'm rambling at this point, so I'm going to pass it on to you. So I have a, I have a question. More, more so a thought. Actually, I take that back. It's more so a thought, Um, and this doesn't necessarily this doesn't apply exclusively to women. I think it's just in general society culture in general i think it has it's slightly narcissistic and i don't think people are doing this intentionally but i think far too many people think that they're settling because they can do better when in actuality they may be doing the best getting the best that they can actually get there's a saying, I'm not going to take credit for it. There's a dude on Twitter I follow who always uses it. And I wouldn't look it up because we all know how I am with sayings. Water always finds its level. So I'm just saying, do some people settle? Maybe. But I think by and large, the majority of people might be at their best best in terms of the type of partner that they can receive it's like on facebook i remember before i curated my feed and got rid of like a lot of got rid of all like a lot of the trash from like people that i'm friends with because they just the stuff that you consume it has an effect on you psychologically emotionally mentally i used to see like the same people baby daddy stuff baby mama stuff wild dudes like this wild women like this and i'm like okay first one i'll give it to you and yo dude's trash Woman, trash, immature. But when you get to like the third or fourth in a very relatively short period of time, what does that say about you, Mm -hmm. your decision making, where you are, what kind of person you're attracting, how together or or not together you are because you keep signaling or attracting the same type of person. So I don't know these people. You don't know these people. Maybe she didn't settle. Maybe she's where she's supposed to be. Maybe that's he, her, the circumstances, where they presently are, how they're currently constituted. They're the absolute best that each each other could have. And I think that that's why a lot of people, I think that's why some people may consistently, um, be so quick to move on from something because one it's hard relationships are hard marriage is hard serious relationships are hard but there's this thought that oh i don't have to put up with this because i can do better well maybe your better is actually putting in time and effort in developing the relationship you have instead of cutting and running because it's not it's not flashy it's not the filter on instagram it's not the rose petals on the on the hotel lobby or on the hotel room floor it's not destinations look like there's a lot of magic to still be discovered in our relationship we're eight we're 12 you're almost 12 years in four dating eight married in october it's a whole lot of magic to be discovered but just imagine even to this point, how much we would have missed out on if we had just given up. Cause we had plenty of times we did give up. You told me, leave me alone. I did. <laughs> like, yo, and leave me alone. Keep not. my name out. Your, like Jessica. I was, was trying so, so hard to move on from me, but I told her I'm not going to let you go, baby. So done with him. Y'all. Look, just, I'm from the nineties era R and B. I was outside her window in the rain with my boom box and a trench coat. I would not let her go. But in all seriousness, like, Maybe that's your better is with the person you're with, but you got to work at it. It's not, it's ne- there's no perfect anything. Like everything that you and I have, we've had to work for. And I think we still want it to be better and we still have to work to make that better a realization. But who's to say if I had just cut and run, I was like, now, you know what? I'm not trying to deal with this drama. I can't. Like these Africans, they on some other stuff. Like I'm gonna go get me, like just, just, just somebody else. 
and I'd have been, I, I, <laughs> I would have been worse off. Like, like there's but no. You could have been better off. Maybe, but what I'm saying is the people who keep going from relationship to relationship to relationship to relationship. Because I'm still First speaking. Of all, I was just inhaling. Because I'm still no, 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 no. I was respecting you. No, no, that was a back. that was a. Oh, I disagree with this, and I no, can't actually, wait. To, I can't wait to respond. It, it was not. Back. It, so, like, with this thought, this societal thought that I think a lot of people carry, like, oh, I can just do better. Like, I don't have to put up with this. Like, I can do better. Water finds its level. You might be at where you're going to be at. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of people, I keep saying that, it's not a lot of, because I don't know a lot of people. <laughs> I think people, a person, um, should seriously assess themselves uh, when having these thoughts and when in a relationship and considering if it's something uh, that they want to pursue, if they want to go somewhere else. Um, because. Like I said, my Facebook feed, man, it was like the same people. Like, same, like damn, what's like six months ago? Weren't you just saying the same stuff about dude, dude, or, chick. Or, or, or chick, like, or short? Like, at what point do you like? Oh, maybe, <laughs> maybe it's me, <laughs> like, or maybe this is the best that I. This is the best. This is the kind of person how I am presently as an adult, a human being. Maybe this is the best kind of this kind of person that I'm attracting is the best that I can do. Mm-hmm. So I either need to make the best of that. Or I need to improve myself, improve my circumstances, mm-hmm. my situation. That's just a thought. Now, to me, Popeye's parking lot, you know, you at least gotta go to Chick fil A. You're like, come on, Popeye's, come on, bro. Um, but I understand because, you know, they're always, it's always a 15 minute wait on spicy. So I can understand why the line was long. Um, you know, go to KFC, they're not as, you know, probably not as busy. But I did see uh, I did see Instagram. I don't know if it's if it's real or not because you got to assume everything's doctor these days. But uh, definitely feeding off uh, a lot of the attention they've been getting from the New York Times. It was dudes posting. It was something like uh, she didn't demand like expensive dates, <laughs> and I I I'd have to buy her anything. I was like, yo, this dude got he has people on Twitter in a. F- fit and i don't even think he realizes it and maybe he does maybe he's just like a master troll and maybe he's just eating this all up but yo people are not happy like whatsoever i've never I've, it's very rarely that i see somebody see p- other people so invested in somebody else's relationship like and i'm not talking like celebrity like just this is like a base normal couple like you and me and people are just they're just having they're, they're not having it and i'm I'm enjoying it. It's great content for me. I'm enjoying it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's weird, but I mean, who wouldn't, you know, I think it's cool that they're proud of their, their story. I think that's great. As unorthodox as it may seem, there's probably an even wilder story out there. Um, our story is kind of wild to be honest. So it's, it's just been really good content for the last couple of days last well, day or two i guess i think it was yesterday i first saw the couple in the article i'm sorry you've been trying to say something go ahead uh what I, I have two points i'll probably only remember one but i think the hard thing about relationships in how they stand in our modern society not having arranged marriages and you know marry your class is that everybody who commits to a relationship settles and no one wants to use that terminology and i don't mean settle you you settle because there is always something else someone else that is out there that you could pursue that you could wait for so if you choose this is this is the person that i'm going to be and that is settling to an extent now it depends on if you see settling in the kind of like the connotation of a negative act of, you know, I'm, I'm just taking this and there's the better that's out there for me. I'm not going for it because I either don't think I'm worth it or it's too much work, whatever. If that's the connotation you want to take it in, that's, that's that. But if you also want to see it as I'm settling in the sense that this is where I'm going to establish the roots 
of a successful relationship that is also a settle so um i think that's that's the the big picture that people need to acknowledge that every relationship you get into is settling because there will always be someone who is taller heavier thinner darker lighter well fit whatever body more attractive. Skate, more attractive than the person you're with it doesn't matter this person could do everything right buy you all the gifts that you want and all that good stuff but they there might be someone else who wouldn't do that but looks better you're all there's you're settling in some capacity in some way um so i think that that's foundationally what i want to say that you know i see your point in terms of like you know, we're always in our society, like, are you elevating yourself, you know, growth, are you better, you know, high value man, all of these big, big talk, big words. And you're right, there are people who, like, some people say the best is yet to come, like, this is your best, you're not going to get any better. And there are some people where it's just, there are some people, am I going to have to edit this? You can edit it, you can leave it. But there are some people who, and this could, some of it could not be of their own. It could just be a product of the environment they grew up in, what they've seen. They don't know any better. So they won't get better. They'll see it. You know, it's easy to see Disney fairy tale princesses and want that, want someone to sweep you off your feet. But not every man is a prince. Not every man has prince capability and not every woman is a princess and not every woman is going to carry herself to be treated like a princess. I've seen plenty of women who a good man comes along and they have they have found every bad thing about him. And they let him go. And and so it's the real. The, yeah, I never watched them. So I think it's it's such a mixed message with society where people are like, I'm I know your worth and blah blah blah, and as a human being you are valuable because you are on this earth, but if you don't actually do the pruning for yourself, it's very easy to prune somebody else to tell them you need to do this, you need to be give me this, you need to do that. Are they gonna listen? No. Um, but it's You're right. Easy, it's just extremely easy. To it's just an easy task to, fingers and say, to turn a mirror to oh, face yeah. someone else. Um, but you're right. There are lots of people where it's like, honey, you keep getting in the same type of relationship because you're not changing. You want to, you want people to adapt and conform to you. And yes, that's the easy thing. But if you want, like, if you want a good man, you need to be a good woman. If you want a good woman, you need to be a good man. And there are some people who can slip through the Facts. cracks and you can be bad and somehow you can be a bad man and still end up with a good woman. You can be a bad woman and end up with a good man. I don't know how that works. Some people are just lucky. They just have that kind of favor on them. No. But yeah. But then I also think that there are some people like to that troll um, account. There are some women who don't actually challenge men to step up. And because of that what troll account that account that said she settled for kfc parking lot stuff like she didn't oh. i think that there are people who there are instances where you can be with someone and you in a non-manipulative way can coerce them into finding the better that's in them and pulling it out for them to become better i would say and that comes, I mean, that's iron sharpens iron. That's a biblical statement. You know, if you are in relationship with someone, whether friendship, marriage, whatever, you should be bringing something out of them and they should be doing the same out of you. It's a reciprocal act that is making you improve. So you've said many a times, I challenge you. I'm always challenging you. Like you'll do something good. And I'm like, yeah, but, and I'm working on not everything having a, but at the end of it, but that's what pushes you to do more to do better when i say you can't do something oh, that's when all of a sudden you can do it so that's that's your driving force there are ways in which you also challenge me where i feel like i need to improve myself i need to not necessarily compete but make sure that i am at a certain caliber um sorry 
so I will agree with that troll account in terms of like sometimes women just take the bare minimum from guys where it's just like if you know you want like if you know your love language is gifts you know you want to be treated a certain way you need to express that and you need to let that be known so that person can try and live up to that expectation i'm not saying every day they're going to come home with a gift for you but they're going to try i know my love language is active service i feel most appreciated most loved when someone takes responsibilities from me without asking me that's just something and that's something that we bicker on all the time that's something i get upset with you on a regular basis where it's like you'll plan something but then you'll ask me like what i want to do and i'm like that's not you planning it. That's you asking my input. I don't want to have to give my input. I want some, like, I'm a woman who's constantly having to make decisions, deal with budgets, all of this stuff on a regular basis. So I want someone who's just going to make a choice for me. I like that. That's my preference. You know, I, I made a choice not to release the last podcast episode and you got upset about it. So I just wanted to point that out. But please continue. That's not the kind of, that's business. Yeah. Oh, it's different. Okay. Personal. Yeah, okay. Because Rush Vibes is business, yeah. not personal. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes you need to challenge, and it's not always easy because I've been challenging you in this area for years, and <clears> like <throat> you, you still have a ways to go to get there. Not, and it's always going to increase. But my my point that I'm trying to circle back to is, you do need to challenge someone to be better. Like if someone is doing something in a relationship that you don't want to tolerate it, you don't tolerate it. If you don't tolerate it, they improve. That's why when people break up and people realize like, oh, this is a good person. I can't let them go. They get their act together because they recognize that I need to make the necessary improvements to keep this person, um, which is also frustrating because it's like, why should it take a breakup for you to become better? But all in all to say, there could be an, to an extent that she and other women are not tasking men or also men not tasking women to come up to standard. So we all settle. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I settled for you. You settled for me. Yeah, I don't. Um, it's interesting. I don't know that I agree, but it's, it's interesting. I said I don't know that I do. That's literally what I said. I don't know. Mm -hmm. That means you don't. You know, if I say I don't agree, I, I, if I don't agree about something with, if I don't agree with you on something, I will say it. That's one thing I too am trying to be better about is speaking to you directly uh, and in an unsheltered manner. Because uh, when you do that, you sort of suppress how you really feel for the benefit of somebody else. And then you don't actually really you're not being your true authentic self. So it's kind of doing both people a disservice. So no, if I disagreed, I'd be like, no, I don't, I don't agree. But I don't know. Because it's a different perspective. Never really heard it before. So I don't know how I feel. <clears throat> so hour and 38 minutes. It's a nice bounce back episode. Very long. Wide ranging. Mm -hmm. I would say. Um, needless to say, uh, that's where we're going to stop. So this will be. I was say when I commit, because then I actually have to. Something always comes up. Like I got to go to go to Rockingham on Wednesday. But if I drop it tomorrow, this will be a Wednesday drop. I want us to get back to Wednesdays. I'm going to do everything I possibly can to make sure that becomes a reality. We took two weeks off. I'm so proud of us, season one. We never missed a week. We always dropped. Um, and we didn't release an episode for two weeks. So it's different. Although it, honestly, from a creative standpoint, uh, it really helped. And then taking the vacation and then, you know, being able to kind of get back, back into uh, life as we know it here. Uh, I think it was good for me as someone who handles most of the well, most of the podcast, uh, especially behind the scenes. So, but uh, from here on out, any, any more breaks will be announced for those of you who look forward to episodes. We'll try not to just disappear for two weeks. Um, but yeah, uh, appreciate everybody for uh, for supporting us. Rocking with us, Vibe Tribe. We love y'all. 
Um, be sure to connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, like us on and subscribe on YouTube. Um, Jessica's real is still doing some numbers. Yeah, I still get like little notifications on my Instagram that somebody's like the real, like at eight, almost 9,000 views. It's, it's amazing. It's fantastic. Of course, the real I posted, I used the old Drake song. So I guess like songs will just disappear randomly from Instagram. But when they, the song is off the platform, it takes the whole audio of the real. So I'm just sitting there like, you can't hear me talk. It's kind of upsetting because I dropped some bars in mine, but another here, another. So, uh, yes, Wednesday, y'all will see this and then we'll be back next week. We have to, uh, coordinate our schedules with our guests that we're going to have in here, but, um, you should see at least one before the end of August, hopefully two. We've got quite a few lined up, so stay tuned for that. But anything else? Cool. We out. Y'all be safe. Stay cool. And the summer is almost here. So, uh, take those last, take that last vacation. Labor Day's coming. I guess that'll be like the last big holiday of the summer. So, um, yeah, be safe. Have fun. We'll see y'all next week. We out. Peace. Yeah. None but some growing pains. Yeah. Hey. Hey. I done came way too far, can't stop me now. I done came way too far, can't stop me now. I done came way too far, can't stop me now. I done came way too far, can't stop me now. Can't stop me now. Can't stop me now. Yeah, I done came way too far, can't stop me now.